Hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Praise God for this Tuesday morning. I shall I say, Cora, Messiah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that your word still does not return void. Thank you that it goes forth and does exactly what you desire for it to do. Bless your name this morning, Daddy. We love you, Lord. We give you glory and we give you honor. There's none like you, Lord, in all the earth. Glory to your name. Good morning, Sister Rhonda. Good morning. Good morning. Bless your name, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. Magnificent. Warrior. Lover he is. That's what I want. Warrior. A love sick warrior for Jesus. Good morning, Brother Robert. Good morning, Brother Jeffrey. Good morning, Brother Eddie. Nazarite cry. Good morning, Sister Crystal. Hallelujah. I want to be. Good morning, Sister Tracy. A passionate lover of Jesus. Anybody got that in them? A sacrifice for you. Glory to God. Find it in you. A passion and glory. I consumed a spirit that's burning in me. I'm consumed with Jesus. Lay down. That's what I want to be. A love Warrior. Good morning, Evangelist Karen. Give my all to you, God. I'm not going to take up much of your time this morning since um, I got started late on here. I was up early in God, probably since about 3.30 or so, maybe 4. And uh, just had my own time with God and... Uh, Got to you guys a little late, so I apologize for that. So, I want to talk to us this morning. Good morning. <sighs> good morning, good morning. I want to talk to us this morning about the love of God. And uh, in this season, there's so many people. I, I don't... I've, I've, I've asked God on many occasions, and I know that... People transition. Um, I know that people transition uh, from life to glory. And I say life to glory because we pray that uh, those we know who are tra who have transitioned are believers in Jesus Christ. We go to funerals often. And we're, we may not know. We may, may not be sure. Good morning. And... Um, when we know that they've transitioned in God, we have a hope. We have a hope and we have a hope of glory. We have a hope that mourns differently because we know that we will see them again. But it does not take away the pain of the loss. And I'm even careful about using that word loss. Because they're, if they're in Christ, they're not lost. We know where they are, right? But yet it does not take away the pain, the hurt of them transitioning. And so it is important that those that we love, we know that before they take flight, that they are in Christ. And so we can be confident that we will see them again. The love of God this morning. I, God wants you to be convinced of his love. I talked to her sister yesterday, and she might be joining us this morning. Within, I want to say, I don't know how many years, maybe six years, she lost her two sons, her eldest and her youngest. She only had two. And her husband. 
so the oldest son, her spouse, and her husband. And the grief of that as we come into the holidays, as we come into the holidays. And so I come this morning by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, speaking to that spirit of suicide. Because even though they're, the loss that you suffered, the death that you suffered, the transition of your loved one that you suffered could have been natural. Good morning, Sister Ava, uh, Sister Missy. Could have been natural causes. It could have been by the hand of someone else. Or it could have been by their hand. But this morning we come... In the name of Jesus, be convinced that God loves you. If it was just you, he would, Jesus would have gone to the cross. God would have sent Jesus to the cross. He would have said, here am I. If you believe me, in the name of Jesus, we having some network issues this morning. See how the devil worked? I barely, I barely, rarely ever get network issues when I'm going live in my home, right? He doesn't want someone to hear this word this morning. God loves you. If it was just you, he would have taken every strike. He would have taken the beating. He would have taken the piercing. He would have taken the crown of thorns. He would have taken it all just for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donnie made the song. He did it just for me. You need to claim that this morning. He did it just for me. Share this, tag somebody. You know somebody who's struggling right now with depression because of the loss of a loved one because they don't have enough money to buy Christmas presents because they don't have enough money to pay their bills because life seems like it is giving up on them. They haven't turned the corner from their loss yet. Good morning, uh, Sister Younger. But you know them. You need to tag them right now. You need to tag them. You need to share this. God loves you. God loves them. He would have given it all. He would have said, here am I. Send me, O oh Lord. Be convinced of God's love today. Romans 8 tells us, starting in verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, we've heard this scripture, and you probably have heard it preached. You probably have heard it teached. But I really want us to do this line upon line, that you are absolutely convinced. Hey, uh, mentee, precious, how you doing this morning, Sister Holyfield? I want you, God needs for you to be absolutely convinced. Hey, Sister Evangelist Johnson, God wants you to be convinced this morning that he loves you. Tag someone, share, comment, let someone know God has a word for them this morning about his love. The Bible says, let the perfect love of God cast out fear. I know that we often say that the opposite of fear is faith, but I got a word for you this morning. The opposite of fear is love. The opposite of fear is love because love casts out fear. Fear of how will I live this life without my loved one? How will I live this life without my son? How will I live this life without my spouse? How will I live this life without my parent? The fear of how do I do it without them? Let the perfect love of God cast that fear out. The perfect love of God can cast out anything when you understand that God loves you and he would have given it all just for you. He would have went to the cross just for you. He would have carried the cross just for you. He would have went up the mount just for you. He would have went to Golgotha just for you. He would have went to the Garden of Gethsemane just for you. I know other people, by the time I get off of this message, there'll be tens and tens and tens and soon hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And we declare thousands and thousands of people at fourth, fourth watch prayer and power and teaching. But when I look, it's only a few of you that's watching. But I know when I'm done, I see how many have actually been on with us. And that's okay. But if you own, you need to tag somebody. You need to share this. You need to let someone know this morning. If it was just them, 
God would have gave it all. God would have still sent Jesus and Jesus still would have saying, still would have said, here I am, send me. He still would have said, nevertheless, in the garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done, O oh God. He still would have cried out, if it's possible, three times, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done because the will of God is that all come into the knowledge and the truth and the love of Jesus Christ that they know. He said he waits for all to come into that knowledge and that truth. He's waiting for you to come into that knowledge or truth. Don't you take your life. Don't you get in despair. Don't you lock yourself in the room. I don't want to hear no Christmas carols. I don't want to hear no Christmas songs. It's kind of like Halloween on, on December 25th. You shut the lights off. You pull the blinds so that nobody will come to your house and ask for nothing. Because I ain't got nothing to give you. I'm empty. I'm struggling. I'm struggling within myself. I want a spouse. I want a husband. I hear you single women. I'm tired of another Christmas by myself. Can I please have somebody to wrap a gift for and, and bless that man and give him a gift? I wanted children. God didn't bless me with children. I want children in front of the tree opening up gifts that's from my womb. God, why am I sitting here without children? How is it that I'm single? I hear you. I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. And you haven't sent him yet another Christmas, another New Year's? That be can become discouraging. You can feel hopeless. You can start asking God when, if. Ever, and you can give up hope and the devil is a lie to those of you who have given up so much of your hope that you've turned to the same sex oh he's a lie because you've been hurt so much because you've been disappointed so frequently I just throw up my hands and say either I'm just going to be a nun I'm going to be a monk I'm going to just not do nothing maybe or I'll just give it up I'll turn to something I shouldn't turn to, whether it's liquor or pornography or whatever it is because of your loneliness. Because of your loneliness. You turn to something you shouldn't turn to. But God said his love, his perfect love will cast out whatever you're feeling. The root of everything that we feel that we struggle with is two things, fear or rejection. That's it. Whatever stronghold we are caught in, it is based on fear or rejection. And someone might say, oh, abandonment. No, yes, yes, that could be it. But within rejection, within abandonment is rejection. So he said all these things, yea, in all these things. This is his word this morning in Romans chapter 8 verses. That, what shall we say to all these things? What are all these things? What are all these things? Well, Romans chapter 8 tells us all these things. That we are free from sin. Yea, in all these things. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We, we do not have to. We are free from the struggle of sin. We are not bound to Satan in sin. Good morning, sissy. Sissy Gwen, we are not bound to sin. Yea, in all these, what do we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What can separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the love of God is us not realizing that we are not bound to sin. We go all the way back to chapter verse one. What can separate us? Us not realizing that we are not bound to sin. We are not bound to the way that we think anymore. We are not bound to the things that we used to do anymore. We are free from sin. What do we say? How do we know? What do we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What else? What else? He says in, in uh, uh, 31, uh, verse 31, what do we say to these things? That's the question that Paul asks. I need to bring my Bible a little closer, y'all, because you know when we turn 50, hallelujah, we got to be able to see things. So <laughs> put your glasses on. He said, uh, and what shall we say to things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If he didn't spare his son, but delivered him, 
He said, how, how much more shall he freely give to us and deliver us from all things? Listen, so what are we saying? What is he saying? He's saying that we got to be, there is no condemnation. So, so again, what, what is it? What is it? He's asking us this morning. He's asking us, what shall we say to these things? These things, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. These are the things this morning. Good morning, uh, intercessor, powerful intercessor, Michelle Mattingly. What do we say? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. None, no guilt, no shame. Don't let the devil keep shaming you into wanting to take your life. Don't do that. God loves you. God loves you. And he died. He gave it all. He would have taken every, every, every whip, every whip, all, all of them, all of them. He would have taken the piercing. He would have taken the crown. This is what he did for you. And in this season, there are so many of us who are in despair because you can't buy a Christmas present for somebody. When there's no guilt, there's no shame. It's the love of God. That's what you should be celebrating. This is about Jesus. This is about Jesus. This ain't about uh, Steinmark. This ain't about uh, TJ Maxx. This ain't about, this ain't about Nordstrom's. This ain't about Amazon. I'm an Amazon fan, y'all. Pray for me. This ain't about them. This is about Jesus. And we get bent, we get twisted because of what we can't do at Christmas. It is uh, the 19th. And when I tell y'all, now y'all know how much I love my babies. I love my babies. But when I tell you it's the 19th and I ain't bought, I, I didn't bought some underwear, some t-shirts. I didn't bought stuff they needed. <laughs> Glory to God. I went Christmas shopping because I'm trying to, I'm like, Lord, for real, what is this really about? What what I, I know I'm 50 and I should know. I should be real clear and I think I am. I think I'm pretty clear about what Christmas is about. It's about Jesus, right? It's about mass means celebrate. Celebrate Christ. Go back the other way. Christ mass. Celebrate Jesus. And so, but we get it twisted. So what are these things and all these things? So one of the things is there's no guilt. There's no condemnation in Christ. 831 says, and what shall we say to these things? What are the things? You got to start going back all the way to verse 1. It is, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. He made us free from the law of sin and death. We are not under the law of sin and death. These things, these are the things that we can say. I'm not under the law of sin and death. This is why a few weeks ago I told you, stop saying you're a sinner. Stop saying you're a sinner. You are a, you were a sinner who has been saved by grace. Thank you, Jesus. This is why we can call ourselves that you might be called the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. You got to choose to be called the righteousness of God. How can you say you're the righteousness of God in one breath and then in another breath you say, I'm a sinner? No, no, we ain't going to be double-minded. We're not going to be double-minded. Either you are the righteousness of God or you are a sinner. So let's all say it together. I am, I was a sinner. Say it. I was a sinner who has been saved by grace. And now I am the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. And because of that, there's no sin. There's no condemnation. There's no guilt. There's no shame. I am not bound to the law of sin and death. So in these things, in these things, what else is one of those things? One of those things, uh, uh, we, we, the carnal mind is full of death, the Bible says in verse 6. But the spiritual mind is of life and of peace. Because the carnal mind is an enemy. The carnal mind is an enemy against God. The Bible says enmity. Where we see that again is where God put enmity between the woman and the serpent. Between her seed and his seed. Yeah, enmity. The way we think. Our carnal way of thinking. Our carnal way of thinking. He said that, that right there is an enemy. In these things. So what do we say? What do we say to these things? What shall we say to these things? 
If God is for us, who can be against us? God is for you. God is for you because you no longer have a carnal mind of thinking. You no longer have a carnal way of thinking. You no longer have a carnal way of thinking. So in these things, we can say, God is for me. And anybody else that's against me, I got God on my side. Because I don't think carnally anymore. I have a spiritual way of thinking. I think upon things that are holy, things that are lovely, things that are true, things that are from above, things that are of a good report. God loves you this morning. You got to be convinced of God's love this morning. Anybody... Praise Jesus. Give him some thumbs up. Give him some smiley faces. Give him some thank you, Jesus. God loves you. In these things, you can be convinced this morning. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. So what is? what are these things? What are these things? But he says in verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. Indeed, the spirit of God dwells in you in these things. These are the things you can you can celebrate God about this morning. Glory to God. In these things, the Spirit of God lives within you. I know we raggedy. I'm raggedy. I'll speak for myself. I'm raggedy. I can be raggedy on a good day. Glory to God. I could have prayed as I did this morning, spent my time in prayer an hour before I got to y'all. And then I got to y'all late trying to seek the Lord for myself, seek the Lord for you. Because I didn't know where I was coming from this morning. I'm like, Lord, what you want me to share with the people? Let them be convinced of my love this morning. The spirit of God is in you in these things, in these things, you are more than a conqueror in these things. God is for you. And it don't matter who's against you. In these things that the Holy Spirit, we out of order. Most days, 365, we probably out of order what? Maybe about what? 300? No plan. Ah, we, or we out of order, but the Holy Spirit, holy, holy. I talked to us last week. There are many spirits. There are many spirits. Unclean spirits. Defiling spirits. Tormenting spirits. There are different spirits, but the Holy Spirit lives in you. That's good news this morning. God's holy presence, the nature of God is holy. And the nature of God lives in you. Oh my God, what in the world? That's just good stuff this morning. You ain't got to claim that your mind, you going crazy, and I got this and I got that. No, 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 don't claim that. Don't let nobody tell you, don't let the devil tell you that you got to take your life, that you got to be depressed. Go get you a candy cane or something. Lick on that boy and enjoy life. Good God Almighty. Good God, go get something. Go get your favorite ice cream and just celebrate God for his love that he chooses to live in you. You got to find something. You got to be like David and command your soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul this morning to bless the Lord. I will command. You will not be depressed. You will not take your life. You will not give up on life. I know you're single. I know you don't have children. I know your family is in another state. I know you feel like you're by yourself. But God, go find somebody. Find somebody to bless. Find somebody to bless to eat that candy cane with you. Glory to God. There's some child out here who needs to be encouraged. I know you want to, like I already said, you want to find, Lord, when? When am I going to be able to spend a Christmas with my husband? When am I going to be able to spend a Christmas with, with my wife? When am I going to be able to, okay, that's cool. Well, since you don't have one, go bless another married couple. Go sow into somebody else. Pay it forward. Good God Almighty, you want children? You ain't came yet? Go be a blessing to somebody else's kids. I'm here to help. That's all I'm here to do. So in these things, in these things, another one of those things is that we can celebrate, starting in about verse 12, chapter 8 of Romans, that we have a sonship through the Spirit of God. In these things, in these things, what shall we say to these things? I am a son of God. I am a child of God. Glory to God. In these things, I can celebrate the Lord this morning. Good God Almighty. I have sonship. Now, let me help you with something. Not only are you a joint heir with Christ, you are an heir of God. Okay. So, you you, you know, we used to say you trump tight. Okay, so if you play spades, you know, you, you, you winning, right? So you got all, you know, you got these books, right? So you going to win. So you got to, you got these books, you got these books, you going to win. Okay, so listen, you are an heir of God and you are a joint heir with Christ. Where you go? I mean, you, this thing, you got it on both hands. You good. You good in these things. 
Romans 8, chapter 31. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? One of these things is that you are a son, a daughter of Christ. You are a child of God. Good God Almighty. By the spirit of the living God. And you have, you can cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, God. Now, let me tell y'all something. I got saved, I think, when I was about 13 years old. I confessed Jesus Christ. I didn't know what that meant. Just real talk. I didn't know what that meant. So, at 30, a lot of stuff happened between 13 and 30. I confessed Jesus Christ again. And it was about that time God started working with me on the call of my life to ministry. It was then that I found this scripture in Romans chapter 8 about verse uh, uh, 15. You do not, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by which you cry, Abba, Father. Abba means daddy. Now see, I'm writing a book called My Daddy's Demons. It's about my relationship with my father. Love him, forgave him, amen. It's my story, and I'm, I'm releasing it. But because my father was a father, he didn't quite know how to be a daddy because there are two sides of God. It is the fathership of God, the creator, the protector, the provider, but the daddy part of God is the part that you can get up in his lap and he'll love on you and he'll tell you you're great and he'll tell you you're awesome and he'll he'll just love on you and his touch is always good and his touch is always fair. He just, he just, that's where all his grace lies within that daddy place, that just loving on you. When I found this, every time I turned around, daddy God, that was my cry. Just recently have I started really reaching out to God as father, father. It's just, it's a different, it's a different kind of relationship. And men, you, you as well carry both positions. You are father and you are daddy. And children need the balance of both. We'll talk about that another day. So we have this sonship that we can call God daddy. Isn't that something? You can call a holy God, God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything. You can call him daddy. That does something to me. You don't have to be in despair. You don't have to be in depression. He's your daddy. Some of us are daddies and our mommies have gone on to glory. I have a few people listening to us right now. But God is your daddy. And he said he'll be a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. And that's just not the ones who have been orphaned. Who have been left without because no one wanted them. These are those who their parents have transitioned. He will be your father. And I know that's not a replacement of the physical because you can't go sit down to dinner with them and eat mama's sweet potato pie. And daddy cur carved the turkey. I understand that. I really do. And I'm an ugly crier, so y'all got to work with me. I understand it. I woke up this morning with this thing after I came out of prayer. God, this despair. And I've seen so many people posting things about suicide and encouraging people in this season. And it's called seasonal depression. It has a clinical name. And it's real. And so be sensitive to the people you work with, to your family members, to your friends, to people you come around, because we don't know what they're going through right now. They could be having a seasonal depression, and that seasonal depression makes people feel like they want to take their life. But God wants you to know this morning, you are loved. Be convinced of God's love this morning. Your mommy's gone. I understand your dad. I'm grateful my mommy's still here. Your daddy's gone. I understand. God understands. But he will be a comfort. And in these things, he wants you to be comforted. That you have the Holy Spirit. That you are a child of God. That he is with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He ain't even tripping if you're still a little bit mad at him. Because mommy's gone or because daddy's gone or your spouse is gone or your child is gone. He ain't tripping on that. He said, just don't sin. He said, be angry, but don't sin. Don't sin. Don't go off on people because of your hurt. Don't, don't, don't cuss out the person at Walmart. Don't, don't get in despair. Don't sin and take your life or abuse your life. Don't do it. God loves you. Be convinced of God's love this morning. 
in all these things, in all these things. He said this, this present suffering is nothing to be compared to the glory of God that is going to be revealed in your life. It is nothing to be compared that the glory of God that is going to be revealed in you. When you come through this, the glory of God is going to be revealed. When you get through this season, when you get to uh, December 26th, when you get to January 1st, the glory of God, you'll be able to say, I made it. I made it. The enemy tried to take, I made it. Marvin, Marvin sang the song. Pastor Marvin said, I made it. Listen to that song and declare it in advance. I made it. Glory to my, glory to our God. It's nothing to be compared. So we have this new book project from uh, the mornings after M O U R N I N G S from grief to glory. I know I told the authors, I know that all of y'all ain't, ain't at, uh, ain't at glory yet. But your story is going to help somebody get to their glory. And while you're writing your story, while you're telling your story, and this is for you too. While you're telling your story, you're going to get to your glory. You're going to get to a place that you will see God. You may not understand it. You may not have all the answers. But stop trying to get to the answer. Stop trying to figure it out. Why mama? Why daddy? Why my son? Why my daughter? Why my spouse? Why my husband? Why my wife? God ain't tripping on you asking why. He's really not. But he may not give you the answer. And the fact that you don't have the answer has you in torment. And that brings more depression. God wants you free. Why am I still single? This one's married and that one's married. And I know what she was. I heard you. I know what he was. How he got somebody. He broke, don't work. Been abusive to women. Then had about 1,200 girlfriends and six wives. Glory to God. And he got a wife. Another one. Why am I single? I hear you. God ain't tripping on your why. But you can ask God for a sign. <laughs> that he or she is coming. Why am I still in debt? I give. I sow. I bring my tithes into the storehouse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bring it into the storehouse. So why am I still broke? Why, why, why haven't the windows of heaven opened for me? You keep giving. You keep sowing. You keep waiting on God. And soon, soon, don't grow weary in your well-doing. There is a due season if you do not faint, if you do not give up. Do not allow this season to cause you to make bad, a bad decision. You got choices. You got choices. Some of us. We're going to take that credit card and we're going to run it up because we're lonely, because we're in despair, because we feel defeated, because we haven't got our answer. Don't allow, don't allow this season to cause you to put yourself in a worse place when, after, when you got to pay that bill in January. Hear me, beloved. Be convinced of God's love for you. He loves you. None of this is caught him by surprise. The reason you're in the place that you're in Quite honestly, it's because maybe you just won't let go. You Maybe you really do need to allow yourself to grieve. Mourn the loss. Feel it. Let yourself feel it so you can go through all the stages of it. So that you can live life and you can live again. You can live again. You don't have to compare what you had to what transitioned or what you lost. You don't have to do that. God will give you equal or better, but you don't have to compare. But it's coming if you trust God. So in these things, in these things, your suffering that you're in right now is nothing to be compared to the glory that God is going to reveal over your life. God loves you. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what you're going through. He lost his son. He, his son transitioned and came home to him. Your, your family your family, your loved one, if they are in Christ, they went on to be with Jesus. They went to be with God. And the angels celebrated that. And I know it's hard for you to celebrate it. But know that they are not in pain anymore if they, if they died naturally, if they died from a sickness or disease, if they died by someone else's hand. They are with God and they are celebrating Jesus. And the Bible says that they are, that they are between the porch and the altar crying for you. Because they want you to know in these things, in these things, 
Nothing can separate you from the love of God in these things. God is for you. Because of these things, God is for you. He, they want you to know that. Your loved ones are praying for you. They want you to know that. In these things. In these things that the Holy Spirit is in you. In these things. That the Holy Spirit is praying for you. In these things. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. In these things. You're a son. You're a daughter of God. In these things. You can be convinced that nothing can separate you from the love of God. In these things. All things work together for good because you love God and you are the called according to his purpose in these things. In these things, if God is for you, nothing can be against you. In these things, you can have joy again. That it's all going to work together for your good. He left you. He divorced you. He left you with them kids. He ain't paying child support. He acting crazy. She tormenting you. It's your week. It's your weekend. It's your holiday. But she keeping the kids from you and all these things. It's going to work together for your good. You keep your hands clean. You keep your heart pure. You keep your spirit right. I know it's hard to pray for somebody who acting crazy. Who, who dishonoring you to your children and you trying real hard not to choke them out. Yep, I said it. I said it. You trying real hard not to call the police on them because they keeping your kids from you. You trying real hard not to call and take them back to court because they ain't paying child support and you really don't want to get their daddy arrested and you really don't want to get their mama arrested. But you keep, but in all these things, you trying real hard not to cuss them out. You trying real hard. You try real hard. But in all these things, in all these things, if God is for you, no judge, no court, no person can be against you. They will not rule. They will not reign in the name of Jesus. You got to remember these things. Just don't jump. Thank God for for Romans chapter eight, verse 31. And you can jump to these things. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. In these things, yet in all these things, we are more than a conqueror. You can jump on over to Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 37. You can do that. But you need to know what are the things. And to know the things, you got to start at verse 1 in chapter 8. Matter of fact, let's go to verse, uh, uh, we're going to end right here. Chapter 7 is where he says, uh, Paul is Paul is struggling because he's saying the things I know to do, I find my the things I know to do that are of God, I find myself not doing. And the things I know I shouldn't do, I find myself do, doing. He said, Who can save me? Who can save me? He said, Oh, yeah, I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out in uh in verse uh help me, Holy Spirit, in verse uh twenty four. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me? Who can save me from this body of death? Who can save me from this mind that makes me want to think I want to take my life? Who can save me from this loneliness? Who can save me from this frustration? Who can save me from this despair? He said, I got it. I thank God. It's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In these things, if God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for me, who can be against me? He says, so then with this mind, with this mind, with this mind, I'm going to keep on Jesus. With this mind, I'm going to keep it on God. With this mind, I'm going to believe God for my life. I'm going to believe God for my healing. With this mind, I'm going to believe God. He said, with this mind, I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord with this mind. In all these things, what shall we say to these things? What shall we say that I am more than a conqueror? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels or principalities or powers, nor the things present or the things to come, nor the height, nor the depth, nor the created thing or the thing yet to be created, shall keep me or separate me from the love of God, which is in and through Christ Jesus. The same one who can keep your mind and keep your heart, keep your soul, your thoughts and your emotions in this season is the same one who saved your soul. Though since he saved it, he certainly knows how to keep it. And it is in him that we can say 
Nothing will separate me. Not my stupid mistakes. Not the crazy way that I live. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for these, your people. I thank you that they have a new way of understanding in all these things. That you are in them. And they are your children. They are the sons and the daughters of God. There is no condemnation because they are in you. Hallelujah. They don't have to walk in despair. They don't have to feel lonely. They don't have to feel hopelessness. God, we thank you. We thank you for your love this morning that convinces someone that they can go on. They can make it. We declare the mind of Christ and the heart of God over your people. I pray, God, that this word lands upon in someone's inboxes, on someone's timeline, and they say, wait a minute, I need to hear about the love of God today because I'm not feeling very loved. So, Lord, we thank you, and we bless you. We thank you for the birth and the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Be encouraged today, beloved. God loves you. And if it was just you, he would have took the 39 stripes. He would have took the piercing. He would have took the nails in his hand and in his feet. He would have taken the cross. And because of that, you can put on the same armor of God. You can put on the armor of God today. And you can walk in your freedom and in your deliverance. Because your mind becomes the mind of Christ today. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Um, I won't see you before Christmas, right? So Merry Christmas, Merry Christ Day. We celebrate Jesus. You know, as Christians and believers, we got Christmas every day. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you. Have a great Tuesday. Bye-bye.